service. Not to worry, I will teach Jeremiah and Leah about baseball. <laughs> They're not taking away my lesbian card. <laughs> Bread crumbs and grapes. Yum. This is the good news. How can we live the gospel good news and have the gospel, the good news, live in us. Famous tennis player Arthur Ashe once said, start where you are, use what you have, do what you can. So let's talk about the how. Will you pray with me, please? Loving God, may we live into the words of the prophet Micah to do justice, to love kindness, and to walk humbly with you. May we be persistent in our priorities to enter into deeper relationship with you and live with open hearts. In our actions, may we demonstrate as Christians our faith in you. And may we have the courage to stand up, speak up, and work for justice and peace for the sake of others. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts bring hope and healing to a hungry and thirsty world. Amen. Picture. So I'm, 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 I, I'm channeling uh, Sophia Petrillo. <laughs> <laughs> it was 29 CE in the cities of Tyre and Sidon, ancient near East cities now located in modern day Lebanon. I was talking to our birthday boy, Harry, and he said, he reminded us that that was far away for them to walk, huh? <laughs> there they were, the disciples of Jesus. The author of the Gospel of Matthew retold this story about 50 years after Jesus died. By this time in the history of early Christianity, a clear split was emerging between the followers of Jesus and the temple authorities. The Christian community was really beginning to grow in converts outside the Jewish people. Back to our story. She didn't belong there. The disciples and Jesus were just sitting down to dinner when she barged in. She was a crazy woman, dirty and frazzled. She didn't know her place. The more they said to her, the louder and more persistent she was. She cried, she begged, she screamed. There was no reasoning with her. First, Jesus did not answer her. He was silent. In the honor-shame culture back then, acknowledging her would also acknowledge that she had some kind of claim on them. She was not only a woman, but a Canaanite. Remember, the Canaanites were the ones living in the land of Israel when Joshua led the Hebrews into what for them was the promised land. Well, over a thousand years had passed since the Canaanite Hebrew struggles, and the writer of Matthew deliberately uses this word in order to underline the outsider status of the woman. Not only is she the wrong person, she is of the wrong culture speaking a different language, not only unclean, but an ancient enemy besides. This is such a Jesus story, don't you agree? <laughs> yeah, let's turn things on around and turn them upside down. Jesus said that it is not right to take the children's bread and to toss it to their dogs. You're a dog, implies Jesus. She agrees, yes, Lord, she said to him in a calm and clear voice and a smile on her face. I am a dog, but even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. The woman agrees with Jesus. One way to disarm criticism is to agree <laughs> with the critic. Her concern for her daughter was so deep that she dared cross that falling out between Jews and Canaanites. She was at the point where she had nothing to lose and perhaps everything to gain. 
She comes and cries out to Jesus for help. <coughs> what courage. What determination. What persistence. So what did Jesus do? He smiled at her as if it were all some great contest of wits, and he said to her, Woman, great is your faith. For your reply, your request is granted. Go home. Your daughter is healed. This is the only time in Matthew's Gospel where anyone's faith is called great. The disciples and Pharisees became symbolic of little faith. And this Gentile outsider, Canaanite woman, the ancient enemy, the foreigner, became symbolic of great faith. What? Didn't I say that this was such a Jesus mm -hmm. What Jesus means is not great is her persistence. Not great is her pushiness. Not even great is her need. No, what he means is great is the reason she has for being there when her daughter is sick. Great is the hope she has in coming to Jesus. Great is the trust that led her there and caused her to be persistent, clever, and maybe even a little pushy. Now that is some kind of faith. Don't you agree? Mm -hmm. Jesus crosses the social and cultural boundaries. He changes his mind and acknowledging her faith and persistence and declares that her daughter has been healed. <coughs> For the Canaanite woman, what was her priority? Her family, her family's well-being, helping those in need. She wasn't taking no for an answer. The woman was not content to be ignored because she is convinced that her daughter deserves to be given a chance at living a normal, productive life, a life free of the demons who are torturing her. Her persistence is based on her faith. She held on to her faith despite the barriers raised by others. The story reminds us that members of despised or oppressed groups must be bold in seeking relief for their misery. This week I watched a movie that came out earlier this year. It was the biography of American farm worker, civil rights activist, and labor leader Cesar Chavez. I highly recommend it. I remember a chance meeting with Cesar Chavez in the early 70s in Miami when I was a sophomore at Berry College my first march for human rights. As I was preparing the sermon, I thought that we might see Cesar as a 20th century Canaanite woman. Cesar co-founded the National Farm Workers Association, later the United Farm Workers Union. He inspired millions of Americans to fight for social justice. Cesar's public relations approach to unions and persistent but non-violent tactics made the farm workers' struggle of injustice and indignities a moral cause with nationwide support. By the late 1970s, his tactics had forced growers to recognize the UFW as the bargaining agent for 50,000 field workers in California and Florida. His priority I want to get my hands dirty to get involved, to do justice. He fought for freedom and dignity, for fair wages and better working conditions, for a bathroom in the field, for basic human rights. At the time, the average farm worker lived to the age of 49. There was a boycott of grapes, 1965 to 1970. But on July 29, 1970, all the growers went to sign and agree to the farm workers' request. The strike won higher wages and better working conditions for Mexican and Filipino American migrant workers. Their common suffering and love for each other kept them together through the strike. Cesar said, when millions of Americans stopped doing one thing, eating grapes, we won. 
Say there was a leader who forcefully but nonviolently moved people to what he valued, justice. Until we can decide what we value, we will never be able to prioritize. Mahatma Gandhi said that action expresses priorities. Action expresses priorities. We need to prioritize. We need to push, just like the Canaanite woman. She wasn't bothered by the fact that Jesus ignored her or the disciples wanted to get rid of her. She shrugged off the words of Jesus and then came bouncing back with her response. What motivates us and inspires us? What are we passionate about? For many of us, and especially for our denomination, it is our focus and commitment to work for and on social justice issues. Last year, we at MCC of the Palm Beaches worked on our strategic plan. It speaks to what we value and what we have agreed to prioritize and take action on in our ministries. The vision statement. <coughs> MCC of the Palm Beaches is a joy-filled, justice-centered, Christian community of love, vibrant worship, and spiritual discovery where all God's people are supported as we become fully alive. We value justice. We are a human rights church focused on social justice for all creation. We actively seek equality, justice, and peace. Our breakthrough objective on justice says we will build a culture of service and justice through the worship and action of our congregation. The action of our congregation. We, you and I, are the Canaanite women of the 21st century. In the fall, we will have the opportunity to enter into relationship with others as we further develop our social justice ministry that would add to the amazing work we are currently doing with our HIV ministry at Kevin McGee Drop-In Center in the Bill Meisner Food Pantry. We have a field trip planned on September 13th to Immokalee to see the work of the Coalition of Immokalee Workers and also the Interfaith Action of Southwest Florida Group, which educates and animates people of faith to partner with the CIW in its efforts to improve wages in the fields and put an end to modern day slavery in the agricultural industry. Cesar's mm -hmm. work is continuing but there's more work to be done. Please let me know if you would like to join us. And in October, we will start collecting for a special Christmas toy drive for our neighborhood communities. On November 2nd, we will have a social justice themed worship service. We want to help educate our congregation and community on the many aspects of social justice and what we are called to do our action will express our priorities. Out of desire for healing for her daughter, the Canaanite woman acted and spoke counter-culturally and counter-politically as she reminded Jesus of the larger vision of the kingdom of God. Out of his capacity to be confronted by others, Jesus was willing to listen. And in his openness to change his mind and actions in order to live his mission of love, <coughs> Jesus offers us a picture of what it means to live with an open heart. Out of his desire for human dignity and basic human rights, Cesar reminded us that we, we must be the voice of the oppressed. Our faith must encompass a persistent demand for inclusion in the face of resistance. We must challenge racial, gender, ethnic, religious, political, and economic barriers. This sermon has been about priorities and persistence. This sermon has been about a woman and a man and the symbols for their action, the breadcrumbs and the grapes. The sermon has been about Jesus 
who in his last symbolic act with his disciples took bread and wine and said, remember me, follow me. How? We can start where we are, priorities. Use what we have, <coughs> our faith. Do what we can, persistence. Like Jesus, like the Canaanite woman, like Cesar Chavez, we have the power to transform our world. Are we ready to get our hands dirty? Yeah. Yes. 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 I see your hands. <laughs> now that's the good news. Amen. Yeah.